thank you very much. Uh, let me take the question that uh, come, came from KDC. Uh, on Africa and wind solar energy, you're absolutely right. Uh, the potential is quite huge and most of which has not been realized yet. Uh, as you might have heard at the One Planet Summit yesterday, the number you cited, for example, in Germany, uh, was quoted. But also there were proposed solutions, very practical solutions, from the uh, panelists on what Africa, African countries can do. Uh, I recall three. One is local innovations that we can, Africa can and should learn from other parts of the world, but also come back and say, what does it mean for a particular country? Because every context is different. The second was financing, and it was quite encouraging to hear the pledges yesterday in terms of uh, financing, both from public, but also uh, private sector willingness to scale up. The third is what I would call science, African scientists. I think there was a, a very dynamic uh, speaker who said some of the bottom-up research has to start from, from home, home being Africa. Uh, I would add, and I think there were sentiments as well that came through yesterday, partnerships, collective action, that governments have the role to play in setting up policy, private sector, civil society and people and international organizations, including uh, us. So in summary, I would say we are right, and we are committed to working and continue working with the African governments to push the needle of this area. Thank you. Uh, I will best answer the, the question about to be as honest as possible, I always try to be honest, uh, maybe too honest, not very diplomatic as, as my friends here can witness. So, therefore, I'll give you a very honest answer. I will not answer this question. <laughs> I reached, as I, as I mentioned, these were my priorities. 
uh, you asked about uh, about the reuse and recycling there in the earlier drafts I tried to reach agreed targets and, and agreed time band, but there are companies. So this is a compromise, but as I said, it is more ambitious than ever. There is something to build on. It is a commitment. This declaration is a commitment, which uh, all the ministers can take back home and start thinking how to implement this document. Not just say that, uh, that we made a nice declaration and we have the same dreams and same wishes, but something concrete we need to implement. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that we will need to uh, release Minister Elveston in, in a moment. So before I turn to the questions, can I just see it, any hands for if there is any questions directly at the fifth president, Minister Elveston? If not, is that a question for Mr. Elveston? Okay, please. We'll, and was your question directed to Minister yes. Elveston as well? So let's just take the two questions for the minister and then we will thank him and, and release him. Um, yes, yeah, so my uh, question is um, related to geoengineering. It was reported uh, yesterday that the resolution um, to regulate or govern, govern geoengineering was withdrawn. Um, I wanted to ask why it was withdrawn and was there any consensus reached on the harm or danger that geoengineering technology poses both to the task of tackling climate change and reducing carbon, carbon emissions and also to the climate itself. I think that might be a question for Minister Kiesler and, and, and Joyce more than our incoming president, right? So let's hold that and we'll come back to that, but let me turn to the question there. <clears throat> uh, hi, Tony Connie, Freelance South Africa. Um, I'm hoping that um, the, the Minister may feel less constrained um, in, in a follow-up question regarding the, um, the so-called spoilers and, and, the, and if, uh, if I'm to be specific, the United States and the American Chemistry Council on the use of single-use plastics and recycling uh, and, and marine litter. What can, can you um, perhaps outline the, the nature of the sticking points? Um, uh, which would prevent a, a, a stronger um, resolution and um, and respond to to the, the substance of those different points. Thank you. First of all, I, I would say that Norway put in a resolution on, uh, on plastic and marine waste, uh, and it is what is the the new resolution is not at the same level as what we put in. But we knew that it was, was, it was ambitious. So we think that the resolution now is, it is, good, it is good enough to work on. So we are satisfied with the resolution that it is, as it is today. On the more, more general question, I mean, I, my position is always that I should always achieve as much as I can, as many results as I can with the position I have. And on these issues, as a UNEA and UNEA 5, is always to reach the highest possible ambition that you can get with the, the member states. And that will be also, as it has been here in UNEA 4, that is, is the way it's, uh, whether it's on the Paris Agreement, it's on other issues, is really how can we, with the greatness that we, that we see in the GO6, the report, we have the other reports, is really about having an inclusive process that you can reach that highest possible ambition. And that will be the task that I will have in the next two years. Mr. Elveston, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. We need to move on to your next agenda. Thank you. We have the question on geoengineering. Let me take a few other questions for our panelists. This may be the last round, so I see four hands, and I'm going to stick to these four. We had um, the lady in the corner first, and then and, and we've got four other, three other questions here. Okay, can I begin? I think she was in the corner. Uh, um, Nita Bell from Reuters. 
Um, regarding the, the text on the draft in the, in the declaration on um, reducing single use plastics, uh, would it be fair to say that this is the first global uh, commitment being made on single use plastics? Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Kennedy from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, I, what happens now? I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out how to explain to, to people what happens now. Uh, so, do, do we have another? I don't know if you ju if you have another team from the next unit. I don't know how the process is, and also, for instance, big data the data, the comparable data. Um, if you can choose one or two resolutions and and tell us uh, what the countries are supposed to do and what uh, UNEP is supposed to do, it will be good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm from uh, Spanish New Agency. I uh, have heard from uh, some delegates that uh, there were problems in uh, reforestation, reforestation uh, negotiations, uh, and also uh, in the protection of the indigenous. Uh, what can you tell us about this? Uh, yesterday, uh, the um, Brazilian minister told us that uh, they are going to promote the agro-industrial industry. So uh, uh, Brazil have, has uh, pressure uh, against these uh, factors. Thank you. My name is Leonie from the Royal Media. Now, my question is directed to Joyce. Um, you realize that um, other countries like Germany, they have told us they are closing down uh, uh, coal industries and uh, nuclear power industries. But in Africa, the countries are trying to build them so that we can have this energy. I don't know why is it that uh, African countries are moving in the opposite direction and the other countries are moving in the other direction. Do you even feel let down by African countries? Thank you. Let me turn back to the panel, please. I have so many questions here. Uh, about geoengineering, um, uh, if the resolution was withdrawn, uh, the proponents couldn't find the support, uh, and, uh, and it was withdrawn, but uh, all of the parties actively participating in the negotiations stated that it was very useful discussion. And, um, uh, I talked about it uh, in the first press conference. I, I said that my personal opinion is that we, we cannot ignore uh, the fact that there are universities doing research on different technologies uh, of geoengineering. There are investors investing in those studies, in those research. So uh, just uh, um, um, hoping that it, this issue will disappear by ignoring uh, is not, uh, is not um, doesn't have a good perspective. I think we need to return to this issue anyway about the governance of geoengineering technologies. There are several very different technologies, but obviously they might have strong impact to any country in the world, so therefore we need to talk about it, discuss it. But uh, as I understand, I wasn't uh, really involved in all of the discussions, except the very last ones when, when we were trying to find some kind of compromise there and couldn't. Uh, I guess the, the main problem was that different member states uh, had very different approach. Some of the member states wanted uh, to uh, link it with a strong, very strong message about climate change. And the others wanted to discuss the technologies part of it. But, um, the 
but there were many other complicated uh, factors behind it. So this time uh, it was withdrawn, we couldn't reach the agreement. Uh, actually, the same with uh, deforestation draft resolution, where uh, it was obvious that there was no agreement at this time. About the uh, I don't want to use the word spoiler so many times about <laughs> about lowering the ambition. Uh, you know, I started with proposals, with very concrete targets, and the first timelines for 2021. I realized very fast that it was way too soon. Mm -hmm. And it was 2025 for many targets. And now we have some one target or two, and one time like 2025 and one 2030. So just to describe the whole process. And behind that has been very, very tough negotiations. On one side, uh, everybody could can go to the to listen to them. Listen to the fascinating speeches of different delegations and the ambition you hear at the plenary is unfortunately or maybe it's good that it's higher there. Uh, unfortunately, it's lower when discussing very con concrete things. Uh, it's not easy to take uh, to take commitment on on very concrete uh, timelines and, and very concrete targets. Mm. Yes, on single-use plastics products, as far as I know, it's the first universal commitment. So I am really happy for this. Uh, to answer the question what happens now, now the new presidency takes over. As, as I said, uh, I hope and I believe, as I know, the Norwegian minister quite well, that he will continue building on it and will, will continue the work very well. Uh, on comparable data, we have uh, uh, in the Ministerial Declaration, the following. Okay. We support the United Nations Environment Program to develop a global environmental data strategy by 2025 in cooperation with other relevant United Nations bodies. Actually, the paragraph starts, we will work towards comparable international environmental data and we support so on. So this is what happens, hopefully. And uh, on uh, indigenous uh, peoples um, issue, I guess we've found uh, very good wording for that. And 